Hi guys, today I want to talk about the most simple way how to compensate talk, but the most difficult to explain. Again, I give you my promise, no equations today. This is part 15 of the insights into paramotor geometry. Please make sure you have watched the previous videos. We will jump straight into explaining the scout dynamic torque compensation. The dynamic torque compensation was invented by me and I want to share the full story behind. I will recall a slide from one of the previous videos where I made a conclusion that torque is an aerodynamic effect. So based on the third Newton's law action and reaction, your action is delivering power to the prop and the prop gives you sort of two reactions. The prop has lift and drag and that is converted into thrust and torque. Torque is the square function of speed and this is the reason for the immense increase of torque the more power you apply. The other methods of torque compensation that we have described in previous videos are static. That means they are set to compensate torque at a certain level, but if you add power beyond that level, you are facing uh, the increase of torque. Well, my initial idea was to fight the uh, torque that is an aerodynamic effect in the same way. There is a simple solution that you are all familiar with and that's the windmill because the faster the wind blows the more power the more lift the windmill generates now if we could build the cage of the paramotor in the shape of the windmill, we could actually compensate for torque and let's see how it works. If you add power and increase the RPM of the propeller, the prop will have a lot higher drag, which will lead to higher torque. Now in the same time, the prop generates a lot more end flow, so the windmill built into the cage of the paramotor creates a lot more lift a lot more compensating force. And the cool thing behind this is that both affect torque and the compensation of the windmill built inside the cage are both aerodynamic effects, both are based on pretty much the same principles of aerodynamic of physics and they are both square function of prop RPM and the airflow speed. So my goal was to build a sort of a windmill into a cage and design the profile and the size and everything just in the way that the compensating force with the blue line would just increase the same pace and the same rate as the increase of torque. Now how did I start? The first thing I had to start with was measuring the actual torque at various RPM on the engine. Now this was a really funny experiment. I strapped into my paramotor and suspended on a tree and I got two weight scales uh, on each carabiner. Obviously at the beginning they were both uh, displaying the same weight, so the, my weight was evenly distributed between the two uh, carabiners, between the two risers. Now when I added throttle, it started to turn me sideways, which means this side was loaded more and this side was loaded less. And yes, actually the weight scale showed a higher load, higher weights on the right side than on the left side. And the difference in between times the leverage was the torque. Now the second step was how to measure airflow in flight. That was super simple. Stropped into my paramotor, took off and had a small device measuring wind speed. I measured wind speed in every single corner of the cage. Surprisingly, the airflow, airflow was pretty much the same in all parts of the cage. Now the third step was to do all the calculations and computer modeling to find the best profile 
to be built into the paramotor cage. So I did a ton of calculations to find the best profile, the most suitable profile and size. And this is the very first prototype of the Scout Tour Compensation Spa. This is a part of the cage. And uh, I mean, it looks really cool. And uh, now, now imagine how exciting it was to have the first test flight with it. So the first flight was an absolute disaster. Honestly, this thing didn't work at all. The, the prototype didn't have any other means of torque compensation, so I ended up fully exposed to the torque. I was unable to fly straight. Not, I wouldn't even think about doing a left turn. Simply not possible, a complete disaster and a complete disappointment for me. Luckily, I landed safely. But I have to say, all my calculations were totally wrong. So I had to experiment. Uh, the first thing I did is increase the surface of, uh, of the spar. I added sheets of metal wrapped with duct tape. This is the original that I have flown. Luckily, on the prototype, we had this ball joint and I was able to change the angle of attack on the prototype. So what I did, increase the surface increase the angle of attack and step by step in, in a very experimental way I found the profile, the size and the angle that I believe worked the best. Well, did I succeed? I mean, this was my goal. My goal was to have the dynamic torque compensation with the blue line matching perfectly with the red line of torque. And, and yes, I honestly believe I did. And uh, you need to find out. I mean, go, go ask for a test flight to find out on your own. Yet the dynamic torque compensation is not fully perfect. Let's summarize how it behaves in the air. I will explain where it doesn't work, where it works perfect and where it works near perfect. It does not compensate acceleration torque. No, it doesn't. The acceleration torque is the, is the, is the glimpse, uh, a fraction of a second when you accelerate the prop. The prop did not yet generate enough airflow for any compensation. So in that very short moment, you are left uncompensated. It works perfect uh, at level flight. It works really great at full speed bar flight. My experience is that it works better with advanced gliders and smaller gliders. So what you get with these two combinations, if you quickly add throttle, you are facing acceleration torque for a fraction of a second and you, this torque is uncompensated. So it will like pitch you slightly and quickly to the side, but as soon as the prop reaches the RPM and generates its own airflow, the windmill behind your back will start turning you backwards into the neutral position. So the end effect, if you add throttle, it will quickly turn you to the right and then you swing back and then you remain neutral. Uh, there are some situations where it doesn't work perfect, just near perfect. On the ground with zero or very low airspeed, the prop has higher effective angle of attack, which means it has higher drag and higher torque. So on the ground you have more torque than in the air and you have less airflow than in flight. This is why the dynamic torque compensation works only near perfect on takeoff. Now, it works near perfect at full throttle climb. I believe it's plenty good, but there's a little, little, little uh, torque probably un left uncompensated. It doesn't work perfect with oversized gliders, which I don't believe is a problem at all. Still, I believe this is the best torque compensation you can get on the market. And in the next video, I will do a full comparison 
uh, of all methods of talk compensation. There is one more thing to add. Just recently, a few years later, I found the spreadsheet that I used for the aerodynamic calculations at the very beginning. And I have found two mistakes, just simple mistakes, stupid mistakes in formulas in the spreadsheet. When I fixed those mistakes in the formulas and I added the values of angle and the size of the spark that we are actually using on the scouts, the results were suddenly completely different. And they say that theoretical compensation at level flight is 97% and the uh, calculated compensation at full power climb out is 90%. I truly believe this matches the real performance of the scout in the air.